dear learners welcome to nis studio in this session we we'll discuss about major social problems of india part 1 in this session we will discuss about what are the literacy situation in india what is the causes of illiteracy and we also discuss about the causes of population explosion problem and its consequences so we'll discuss these one by one let us first discuss what is literacy you know every 10 years we have census so as per census literacy term is defined so who is literate a person aged 7 and above who can both read and write with understanding in any language is treated as literate but to be counted as literate it is not mandatory to acquire formal education to be counted as literate you might have seen in locality whether it is in urban area or in rural area there may be some person they may, may not have gone to school but they are literate through communication through uh, education with others they they are able to have they have acquired the literacy skill so it is not always essential that a person has to go to school and to acquire formal education to be counted as literate there is a relationship between literacy and development you might have seen the person who is literate they have more knowledge about the rights and duties if we we'll talk about voting right so they have they are able to exercise their voting right in a proper manner than those who are illiterate similarly a person those those who are literate they are more care and concern about their health and nutrition you can see they are taking more care of their health and nutritional status you can see they more healthy because they know what kind of diet they have to take and what kind of food they have to take in their day to day life similarly if we talk about literacy and development gainful employment is an indicator a person who is has better literacy and education they are more employed and their chances of getting job and salary is much more than that of non literate population or those who have less literacy and education if you can make a comparison between developed countries and developing countries you'll find that the countries who has more education who has more literate they are more employed and they are better in health nutrition and employment than the countries those who have low literacy and low education even you can make a comparison between your state the state like kerala the state like bihar the state like kerala who has more higher education those who do those who are more literate they have higher employment rate than the state like bihar who has low education and low literacy similarly the chances of getting higher education by children is much more when a person is literate so there is a greater relation between literacy and development the family who has more literate population their children are getting higher education than the families who has low literacy and low education similarly those person those who are literate they learn more about scientific skills they they are taking more care of their health and sanitation and each kind of they are able to help themselves in the everyday life let us discuss about literacy rate in india as you, you know every 10 years we have census like 2001 we had census now in 2021 we'll have census report if we talk about literacy rate in india between 1951 and 2011 census you'll find in 1951 there are only 18.3% of total population of the country was literate and out of this 18.3 only 8.9% of female were literate but if you look at 1981 census there were 43.6% of the total population were literate and out of which 29.8% of female were literate so there is, there is a gap of 26.6% between male and female in 1981 but in 1991 52.2% of total population literate out of which 39.3 were female if you look at 2011 census 74.04% of total population literate out of which 
65.46 percent were female. So, if you look at the census between 1951 to 2011 census, you will find the female literacy rate has increased, but if you compare between male and female literacy rate, it is still lower even after so much years of independence. Now, we can discuss about female literacy rate. Female literacy rate is, the, is an effective indicator of development of any society or nation. So, therefore, female literacy rate is given much more importance even in our policy and programs. You might have, if you will if you'll have a look at different policies and programs of government of India, they mostly targeted at the female literacy rate. So, that because it is said that if female is literate, then the whole society will be literate and the whole country will have much more uh, scope of development if a female is literate. Dear friends, if you look at the male female literacy gap, you will find in 1951 it was 18.3, but it has increased to 25.1 in 1961 and then it has decreased to 24 in 1971. But if you look at 2001 census, you will find the fem male female literacy gap it is, it is only 16.6 percent. That means, the policies and programs that were devised to target female literacy rate had significantly helped us in many ways, but we still have to go miles where we can find the male female literacy gap has to be decreased so that the female will be more empowered and we can have more development in the society. Now, let us discuss about rural urban literacy gap. If we talk about total literacy rate of the country it was 64.8 percent in 2001, but if you look at rural literacy rate is, it is still 58.7 percent, while in urban literacy rate it is 79.9 percent. But it has increased to 85 percent in case of urban society, but it is less in, in case of rural society it is still 68.9. So, if we will talk about the rural literacy gap it has decreased to 16.1 percent from, from 21.1 percent in 2001. So, even uh, we can say that the kind of effort has been taken by government of India and also the, by the state, it has helped us to minimize the literacy rate gap between rural and urban society. Now, let us discuss about the state wide variation literacy rate. If we talk about Kerala, it was 93.9 percent, while it is in Lakshadweep, it is 92.3. But if we look talk about the bottom five state, Bihar is at the lowest literacy rate, it is 63.8 percent, while Arunachal Pradesh, it is 67.0 and Rajasthan, it is 67.1. So, from here, you can able to get a viewpoint that the state which has more literacy rate, they are more developed than the state which has low literacy rate. Now, let us discuss the state wage variation in female literacy rate. If you look at the census 2011, it talks about the Kerala is at the top 5 state with literacy rate is 91.98 percent, while Mizoram has 89.40 percent. But if you look at the bottom 5 state, Rajasthan is 52.66 percent, while Bihar has 53.33 percent. So, from here you can able to make a decision that the female literacy rate is also the indicator of development. The state which has more female literacy rate, they are the more developed than the state which has low literacy rate like Rajasthan and Bihar. So, there is a strong relationship between female literacy rate and development linkage. The study points out that the five states with the largest proportion of literate women Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal and Maharashtra account for 53 percent of all the estab business establishments owned by women nationwide, although no more than 33 percent of India's women live in these states. So, we can see that how the women literacy rate is beneficial for the employment and also for the development of a state. 
So there are different causes of illiteracy. We will discuss the major ones. One is poverty, one is population growth, one is lack of awareness and improper implementation of education development programs and different literacy education initiatives. So there is a strong uh, relations between poverty and literacy rate. And uh, if we we'll talk about the girls belonging to the families in the top 20 percent get 9 years of education on average while girls from families in the bottom 20 percent get none at all. Because you know due to poverty people are not able to uh, go to the school and because uh, there is opportunity cost involved with it and they feel that if the family does not have adequate income, so they prefer not to send their girls to school. So, so from these statistics, statistics you can point out that how the top 20 percent those who have income they are able to get 9 years of education on average while girls from families in the bottom 20 percent get none at all. Similarly, if we look, talk about the families belonging to scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, they drop out more than other group of learners because their parents feel that if they send their child to school, so who will going to going to the workplace and they will have the income. So therefore, poverty is the major region of illiteracy and low education. So therefore, you are able to find the find out that in rural areas, the parents are not able to send their boys and girls to school compared to the urban areas. Sometimes the school is far away from the village, so therefore the transportation cost, the cost related to the notebooks, books and dress patterns all, all uh, motivate the families not to send their child to school. So poverty is the main in indicators of illiteracy and so the poorer parents are not able to send their child to school because they do not have adequate financial resources with them. And similarly, population growth is the major regions of low literacy rate in India. If you go to the rural areas and tribal areas, you will find that there are only one school in for the 5 to 10 villages. And similarly, the schools are being distanced from the um, village, so they are not able to send their child to school because the child has to go through many forests and rivers to reach to, the, reach to the school. So low school to student ratio is one of the major issues in case of illiteracy in India. Similarly, teacher availability is also is an important indicator of low literacy rate because we still have less number of teachers if you compare between the number of children who are who want to be educated. And if you we'll make a comparison between the availability of teachers in the rural areas and urban areas, you will find that more teachers are in the urban areas than the rural areas because teachers do not want to go to the rural areas because in rural areas the school does not have adequate facility, the village they, they are going to teach, they do not have adequate transport and communication facilities. Therefore, teacher availability is the major regions of low literacy rate and low education in the rural and urban areas. Similarly, quality schooling is, one, is an important because the parents feel that if the, teach, if the school is not providing adequate quality, adequate education, so they feel that what is the point to send their child to school. So therefore, quality is an important indicator because the parents feel that if the teach, school is not providing quality education, so there is no point to send their child to school. So there, but throughout the years, government has, try, government has tried to provide different kind of incentives, schemes and programs so that more and more child can come to the school and they complete their education. If we talk about education policies and programs throughout years, India has devised number of policies and programs so that more and more children get adequate and quality education and they complete education and they gain fully employed in different private and government sector. If you look at the different education policies and programs, government has come up with many policies and programs so that the children get adequate and quality education and they complete education successfully and get gain full employment in different spheres. So, if you look at the policies and programs, we had Kothari Commission in 1964, then we had policy, National Policy and Education in 1986, which was revised in 1992. Then we had 
district primary education program in 1994, then we have Sarva Siksha Abhijan and Rashtriya Madhyamik Siksha Abhijan, then we had Right to Education and then National Education Policy 2020. If you have a look at National Education Policy 2020, it has recommended for the quality education where the children will have adequate access to quality education and so that they can complete education successfully. Now we can discuss about how open schooling has played a very successful role in access, equity and quality education in different parts of the country. As I told you uh, because of poverty, because of low access to school, because of quality, lack of quality education, the parents were not able to send their child to school. So therefore, open schooling provides the opportunity where the child can come to, to the fold of quality education, they can study at their own home own time and they can complete their education successfully. If we talk about there are many uh, children with disabilities but they do not have proper access to school, formal school because the formal school does not have adequate infrastructure, adequate special teachers who can teach to the ch children with disabilities. If we talk about open schooling, in case of open schooling child can learn at home, they can devote their time as per their wish and they can go through the study material and they can complete education. Similarly, there are many girl children who are who did not go to school at their own time and they have they are above age of 6 to 14. So they cannot go back to the formal school but they can study at their own time through open schooling facilities. If we we'll talk about National Institute of Open Schooling, it was established in 1989. So in open schooling in NS system of education a person can study at anywhere and at any place and the study material goes to the to student and they can also access various television and radio channel to have quality education. So we can say that in present day context both formal schooling and open schooling can complement each other and they can the student can take any opportunity as per their own ways and they can get flexible and quality education both through open schooling and formal schooling. Uh, dear learners, we have discussed about illiteracy as a social problem. Now we will discuss about uh, population explosion is a social problem. Let us discuss what is population explosion. Population explosion is a rapid growth of population. It reveals increase in population at an alarming rate. It occurs due to rapid fall in death rate without a corresponding fall in death rate. You might have studied about three stages of population growth in stage 1 both birth rate and death rate is high. Why both birth rate and death rate is high? Because due to lack of education prevalence of traditional norms which result in high birth rate. And there is a second stage where the death rate is low and birth rate is high. Why it is happened? Because industrial relation leading to improvement in education and health decreases death rate. And further attitude towards change of family also remains same which has led to high birth rate. If we we'll talk about stage 3 here both birth rate declines because of education of parents and also due to adoption of birth control. All the societies whether it is industrial society or urban society or rural society so, so they have to come through all these stages and some of so, so therefore three stages of population growth is very important concept when you discuss about population growth and population explosion. Let us discuss about India's population. As I told you every 10 years we have census, census being conducted so that we can have a proper planning and program implementation for development of the country. As per census 2011, India's population has jumped to 1.21 billion showing an increase of by more than 181 million during 2001 and 2011. If we we'll talk about the total population of India it is equal to the combined population of the United States, Indonesia, Brazil, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Japan put together. Let us talk about the rural and urban composition of India's population. If we we'll talk about 2001 census, India has 102.9 crore population out of which 74.3 percent were rural population. But if we we'll talk about 2011 census, it was 1 to 1 0 crore out of which 83.3 crore were 
dear learners let us discuss rural and urban composition of population if we talk about census 2011 we had 1 to 1 0 crore population out of which 83.3 crore were rural, rural population and urban population was 37.7 crore but if we talk about 2001 census it was 102.9 crore while rural population was 74.3 crore urban population is 28.6 crore. Let us discuss the percentage of population between rural and un urban population. If we talk about 1901, it was 89 percent of total population were rural population. But if we talk about the 1951 census, it was only 82.7 percent of population were rural population. While in 2001 census, it was 72.2 percent and in 2011 census, it is 69 percent. So here you can see how rural population has decreased throughout years between 1901 to 2011 census. While it was only 11 percent in 1901, now it is 31 percent in 2011 census. So there is increase of 20 percent of urban population between 1901 to 2011 census. Let us discuss the causes of population explosion. One is illiteracy, one is preferences for son, one is poverty and next is lack of awareness. We will discuss each one by one. There is a strong relations between population growth and literacy linkage. Let us discuss TFR, what is total fertility rate? It indicates the average number of children expected to be born per woman during her entire reproductive span between 15 to 49 years of age. If we talk about the national total fertility rate, it came down from 5.2 to 4.5 in the 1971 to 91 period of, and from 3.6 to 2.2 in 1991 to 2017. So here it indicates that between 1971 and 1901, the literacy rate has increased. So therefore, we are able to find that total fertility rate has declined from 5.2 to 2.2. If we we'll make a state-wise comparison between Bihar and Kerala, you will also find it that how population growth and literacy is very much related. The Bihar reported the highest total fertility that is 3.2 about twice that of Kerala that is 1.7 and Delhi 1.5 which scored the lowest. So Bihar having the lowest literacy rate has the highest total fertility rate while the state like Kerala and Delhi those have highest literacy rate they have the lowest total fertility rate. So the literacy rate has a deep implication over population growth. The country's average family size is being pushed off by seven of India's most populous states where total fertility rate remains above 2.1. The states like Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Jharkhand are the laggards with family size higher than the 2.5. The states, those have the lowest literacy rate, they have the total fertility rate and they have the higher population than the states who have more literacy rate. So, literacy rate and population growth are much more related to each other. Let us discuss the consequences of population explosion. One is lack of shelter and landlessness, poverty, illiteracy, low standard of living, unemployment, malnutrition, undernourishment, growing migration and crimes. So, this leads to population growth, population explosion leads to all kind of problems in the society. Let us discuss how population explosion leads to problem of landlessness. Large families have created problems of housing and homestead land. It creates a situation of landlessness due to division of land in each generation and brothers. So we can see in the urban areas also where even in a small household members are residing. If we talk about why the COVID like situation was much more prevalent in the urban areas than the rural areas. Because in urban areas, even in one home, even in one uh, flat, you will find multi many, many people are there, so they are staying there. So because in a small uh, space, there are much more population are there, so COVID spread like anything. 
also landlessness result in poverty because you have less number of land so the production is also less so landlessness result poverty also poverty also increases liter illiteracy because your poor families send their children to work instead of sending them to school so population explosion leads to landlessness poverty and also Ill illiteracy it also leads to health problems it comes in the way of proper nutrition and nourishment of family members it also brings health problems because if you have the less less income and there are larger population so we so we can provide adequate health and care facilities to each and every member of the family also the society so therefore population explosion also brings health problems as i told you because covid-19 has spread in urban areas because the government has lesser financial resources to cater to large population similarly frequent birth affect the health of the mother and children it also affect feeding and nourishment process also rapid increase in population creates situation of unemployment and low wages as i told you because government has employment in some avenues and and there are much more population to who want job in both private and government sector so therefore more population leads to situation of unemployment also low wages population explosion also leads to crimes when people are not able to get adequate income people are not able to fulfill their day to day life through the society got disorganized and they commit crime so population explosion leads to crime also therefore you can find the st the country who has less populations so there the crime rate is also less compared to the country who has higher population because the police rules and regulations a study based on census 2001 estimated that india has roughly 20 health workers per 10000 population with allopathic doctors comprising 31% of workforce nurses and midwives 30% pharmacist 11% ios practice 9% other is 9% so because we have higher number of population and the healthcare professionals are also less so population explosion leads to health problems if we we'll talk about migration migration is also result of population explosion because people are not able to get adequate employment healthcare facility education facility in rural areas so they migrate to urban areas As per census 2011 India had 45.6 crore migrants compared to 31.5 crore migrants in 2001 So if we talk about 2011 census 38% population were migrated in 2011 census Between 2001 and 2011 while population grew by 18% the number of migrants increased by 45% because in rural areas there was no adequate health care facilities adequate schooling and also employment opportunities so people migrate from rural areas to urban areas in search of job adequate education and health care facilities in 2011 census 99% total migrants was internal and immigrants comprised 1% even during lockdown you might have seen that people were migrating to their own areas people were go going back to their own rural rural areas and when lockdown was over they migrated they again came back to the urban areas because they did not find adequate employment in their own areas so because they have to fulfill their basic needs so they came back to urban areas after the lockdown was over dear learners in the session we have discussed about major social problems of india in which we have discussed about illiteracy as a social problem and population explosion as social problem in which i will discuss about its causes and consequences hope you enjoyed the session if you have any query you can send a email to us at aosoca@nios.ac.in thank you